So what we can read is uh, 1,150 murders recorded uh, due to domestic violence, uh, just under 4,200 common assault cases committed by children, uh, commit, and then an increase in sexual offences against children. Uh, we also see Nyanga uh, recorded the highest number of murders, and we're going to try and find out what could be the reason? A little bit later on, we're hoping to go to the Western Cape to find out what's going on with that, that statistic. The murder rate up by 3.4%. Again, alarming and uh, disturbing. Sexual offences up by just under 5%. Uh, we've got robbery and residential premises uh, up by uh, just under 1%. Uh, contact, contact related crimes up by uh, just over 1.5%. And stock theft, nearly 3%. Uh, stock theft going up, commercial crimes up 14.4%. Uh, all right, one last uh, g graph there. It's not all bad news because we did see some improvements. So there was a decrease in all categories of aggravated robbery. Um, we saw that all property-related crimes also decreased somewhat. Uh, carjackings were down by nearly 2%. That's uh, encouraging. And cash in transit, remember that was a big deal at one stage. We were seeing a, a spate of these happening. So cash in transit, bank robberies, truck hijackings have decreased. Quite likely that this has uh, seen other crimes increase as they move away from that. But uh, a person who can tell us all about that and try and make sense of all of this for us is Professor uh, Johan Berger, who joins us from our studios in Pretoria. Prof, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the program. Um, how should we read these statistics? And I guess one of the things is, how, ca how much can we rely on them? Do they tell us the whole picture? Yeah, thanks, Peter. I, I think we must keep in mind, most people probably already know, that the police's crime statistics reflects only those crimes reported to the police. So there's a large uh, uh, number of crimes that happen that are not included in these statistics. And in fact, the uh, Victims of Crime Survey carried out by Stats SA every year or every second year shows that, uh, that the number of people who report crimes to the police are on the decline. In other words, uh, fewer crimes are being report, uh, reported to the police. Uh, burglary, for example, I think uh, only about 60%, uh, just under 60% of all burglaries are reported to the police. So uh, in, in most countries you would find more or less the situation, um, but still I think we are uh, worse off than most in terms of the high number of crimes that are not reported to the police, which in a way skews the crime picture if we only rely on the police's crime stats. So our recommendation is to look at both these reports, stats SA reports, victims of crime survey, as well as the police's uh, crime statistics. Can I just uh, make one correction in the yes. slide that you showed, the last slides? Not all subcategories of aggravated robbery is down. There are seven subcategories, and only five of them is down, which is a positive thing, but still, house robberies and street robberies are both up. And if you consider the fact that uh, approximately 50% uh, of all aggravated robberies are street robberies, right. then this is a serious, serious problem that we are facing. All right. I'm not quite sure where to even begin trying to explore this, because it just seems like such a huge problem. Uh, let's start by trying to understand what the statistics tell us. Are we saying that people are more brazen or is police just struggling to cope uh, with crime in general? Peter, I think you've, you've touched on a, a, a lot of uh, the, 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 the real reasons for yeah. this. Uh, we must keep in mind, if you look at crime, certain crimes are more prone for police intervention. And here we are looking at uh, uh, aggravated robbery uh, and, and to some extent also property-related crime. Where the police can uh, proactively, if they have good intelligence, if they study crime properly, um, if they are able to identify uh, ringleaders such as they did with the cash in transit robberies, they can make a much, much bigger impact on the reduction in those crimes. The problem, I think, for the police is those crimes that are 
um, largely caused by interpersonal relationships, such as murder. We know, for example, that uh, approximately 60% of murders uh, are, are uh, caused by conditions outside of the control of the police. The question then is, what about the 40% um, that the police... And uh, the 40% results from, for example, aggravated robbery, mm -hmm. from gang-related violence, from taxi violence, from all kinds of uh, other conditions. But the ones that you've pointed out right at the beginning that relates to uh, interpersonal conflict and to uh, domestic violence, there we need to see uh, a much bigger involvement of other, other government departments than just the police, as well as NGOs and community-based organizations that deal with those, with those conditions. So this is why we've been calling for a long time now for an integrated approach to how we deal with crime and not just rely on what the police do or what the police are capable of. All right, so uh, in terms of strategies, um, c can the police overcome this? It uh, looks like uh, almost an anarchic state by the way that statistics are, 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 are playing out. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, and, and this is our concern. Um, as I said, we, we, on the one hand, we do have these socioeconomic conditions that to a large extent is driving uh, a lot of our uh, um, public violence and is driving a lot of our interpersonal crimes. But there are areas, areas as, I, as I pointed out, that are m more policeable. And here we look at the police, and uh, I'll refer to some of the positive signs here, but uh, the police have been... Um, have been uh, um, uh, finding it difficult to deal with uh, some of these organized crimes because of a lack of good intelligence. They simply don't know who these crime syndicates are, who the bosses of these syndicates are. They do not have enough uh, intelligence to preempt most of these attacks. Of course, there are pockets of excellence and, and some, uh, um, and some uh, uh, successes here and there. But we believe, and, and the police have started last year, they appointed a new divisional aid for crime intelligence. There is a rebuild of that division now taking place, but it's slow and it's going to take a while before it functions at, at an optimal level. The same with the Hawks. Uh, the Hawks uh, are still suffering from uh, the damage done to it as a result of uh, state capture. Uh, we know the conditions and situation created by burning at Lameza. So the current head of the Hawks, Lieutenant General Le Bia, is still struggling to undo the damage done by his predecessor and as a result of state capture. So there are positive signs that things are um, improving, but we must understand, although we are frustrated, that it will time, take time before the police uh, would be able to uh, sort out all its difficulties and be, become more effective. So murders have gone up by 686 cases. That's almost two more per day. What does this mean? Is it, does it mean that guns, firearms in general are again easy to get a hold of? Or w what's going on? Well, uh, <laughs> you know, I think guns... Uh, all kinds of firearms, all kinds of other weapons, knives, sharp objects. These things are fairly easy to, to, to get hold of in, in this country. I think um, part of the problem is, of course, some of the deficiencies within the police service that I referred to, but I want to emphasise the fact that uh, at least at least 50% of murders, and you could then include also attempted murders, uh, as well as sexual offences and, and assaults, are caused by conditions uh, uh, over which the police have no control. So it's unfair in a way, you know, to only look at the police when these crimes go up and say it's because of uh, uh, the, the inefficiency, ineffectiveness of the police that we have the crime. One has to ask the question, um, how do we deal with the conditions, um, the attitudes of men, for example, in the way they treat women? Um, the attitudes of young people, there are programs already where the ISS is involved with some state uh, departments, government departments, trying to um, make an impact, affect 
the, the attitudes of people from a very, very young age. And here you can obviously see a role for other government partners such as education, social development, home affairs and many others to play. So we think it's time that we have a collective approach to how we deal with crime and not rely, as we do currently, on the police and on policing alone to solve our crime problems. Right. It wasn't that long ago I, I had an interview on this program uh, trying to get an understanding, and this was with the spokesperson of the uh, uh, police service, about the number of guns that are going missing from the police service. And that must be a concern because they can only end up being in the midst of crime. This, this absolutely is a problem, and we have uh, spoken about this many times before. It is uh, impossible to understand how the police, who has the responsibility of saving lives, saving property, protecting property, how they could allow a situation where such large numbers of firearms uh, go missing from the police as a result of negligence and as a result of criminal acts by police officers who either sell firearms, as we saw in the Western Cape, that colonel was, was sent to prison, or who uh, uh, make their guns available to criminals at a price to commit uh, criminal offences. Um, so, and, and the control of firearms at police stations. There's been improvements, I must add, uh, not too long ago, when Natim Tetwa was still Minister of Police, we had something like 1,500, 1,600 firearms that went missing from the police uh, on, a, on an annual basis. It's down now, I think, to between six and, and 800 uh, firearms, still far, far too many. But yes, I think this is something that the police must take responsibility for to improve the uh, safeguarding and protection of their firearms. All right, and then perhaps the other intervention that we've seen uh, in the Western Cape in particular, the deployment of soldiers, and nobody wants to see this, but if uh, we hear what was being said in Parliament uh, this evening, I mean this afternoon, that we're a country at war with itself, will we see more and more um, military deployed on our streets uh, if this carries on? This, this is a huge concern. We came very, very close to calling on the military again during the recent spate of xenophobic attacks. Um, let's just call it uh, that for now. Um, but we came very, very close to a situation. In fact, some political leaders uh, uh, publicly called for the deployment of the military. We had the military deployed to xenophobic attacks in 2008, and that was because the police simply could not cope uh, with a widespread uh, of, of uh, uh, xenophobic violence at the time. So it looks like we have succeeded in more or less containing the situation at the moment. But it looks like increasingly the military is being seen as a, as a, a, a plan B, uh, a, a force that is in the background to be deployed um, in support of the police, which tells us and this is what the World Paper in Defense actually says. Where there is a total breakdown in policing, as happened in the Western Cape, then at, even in the short term, um, the president can uh, deploy the military to, to support the police. Now, certainly this is not something we want. The military is not ordinarily trained or equipped and armed mm -hmm. for a policing role. But it just tells you how bad the situation has become if we have to... Uh, on a continuous basis, have to look over our shoulder at the military and say, please come and help the situation. All right. Dr. Johan Berger, always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much indeed uh, for sharing your insights with us on this day. Thank you, Peter. All right. That was uh, Dr. Johan Berger trying to make sense of uh, the statistics that uh, came through today about the levels of crime in South Africa, and they don't make good reading at all.